Welcome back to the Kingdom of Pod, brought to you by Bet Online. Jeff Caves here to talk Boise State and Nevada, and there's really not much to talk about. Let's not get ultimately too carried away. These are always some of the most difficult games to preview, although there are some interesting twists, which I'll get to with Nevada. But this should be a routine win for Boise State. Now, I know I said that against BYU in my preview piece, and I totally missed that. <laughs> but uh, this is a 20-point to 21-point game, depending upon when you last looked at the odds makers and how they felt about this game. Coming off the BYU loss, you know, enlisting to Dirk Cutter, Boise State's offensive coordinator right now, he said for Boise State to play better than they did, and I think they played well in the second half, real well, as a matter of fact, offensively, not as well in the first half, is that you know they have to get off to this fast start, convert the third downs, uh, which BYU had been allowing a lot of third down conversions. They just didn't against uh, Boise State that particular night. I think that when I read further into it and I listen to Dirk about fast starts and I think about, okay, if you don't get off to a fast start and you're doing a lot of three and outs, you're putting your defense under more pressure and – you're sort of running through your list of plays that aren't working. Cause if you go through like three or four, three and outs, you're searching for answers or there's an execution issue or both. And it gets more difficult, especially if you have an offensive team that you're playing against that's having success. It puts more pressure on the entire situation and momentum can start working against you. And this offense with Dirk has performed best with a lead. It gives him more flexibility. It takes off some of the pressure. And that's where he wants to be. Ultimately, I think all coordinators want to be, but maybe with this group still growing and learning specifically. In terms of the pressure that'll be on this game, I looked at it and had to refresh some of my memory, you know, because I don't know what the fan support will be like from the Nevada side. They had, I saw 16,000 for their game against San Diego State for homecoming uh, some two, three weeks ago because they've had a bye week. That was their last home game before San Jose State. And the weather is going to be about 25 degrees in that neighborhood. It's a 730 local time kickoff. I don't know how many will make the run um from Boise to Reno that used to happen so frequently because the weather isn't as appealing and I think there's a decent sized group of people over the age of 50 specifically that won't go back to Reno after 2010 and how they felt they may have been treated there's not as much at stake in this game and just to remind all of us about this rivalry because coach Wilson's doing whatever he can to get fans engaged and his team engaged because uh, their record's terrible two and seven. And he talked about that Boise state Nevada is at one of the top positions of rivalry. It's not quite UNLV, but it's probably their next biggest game when it's on their schedule, you know, thus they have a bye week before this game. So, you know, it must've been something that they were considering and may have even been requesting. And with a bye week, they have more time to install things and heal people. So there's a lot of advantages there. But, you know, the the record that Nevada has against Boise State since Boise State start the incredible, started the incredible run with their cutter is two wins in 22 years. We all know when both of them came, right? A lot of us were there in 2010, and then were there the last time they came to Albertson Stadium which was last year. I didn't even remember myself that it was that bad. That's not a rivalry. And that's 22 years. <laughs> that is a long time. And there's a lot of Indian casino gambling across the West that people can get a fix at. So the lure of driving to Reno, I'm sure is different for those folks who just wanted to go down for that. It used to be a great road trip. I still enjoy going there if I were closer, not here in Texas. So I'm not so convinced it'll have a great atmosphere, so I don't know how jacked up Nevada will get for that. I did take a look at the San Jose State game because I think they're a good team. And they were, you know, in this game, they were up 21-7 to in the third quarter with a couple minutes to go uh, into the third quarter. And 
They lost the game 35 to 28. They had mistakes. They had two pass interferences. They had a bad kickoff return they shouldn't have done. They had penalties. They had terrible punting. Their O line protection collapsed. They gave up nine sacks against San Jose State. And all of this occurred, not the nine sacks, but they did give up a couple of sacks. But in the last 10 minutes of that game, it was a total meltdown for the University of Nevada on the road in San Jose in that seven-point loss. Well, what about this team? All right, they're still trying to get adjusted to this quarterback. They want to give him a chance. In the end, they want to give him a chance for a couple of uh, games because he's going to be around for a couple of years, whether he's a starter or not. I'm not convinced he will be. Um, anybody that gets sacked nine times, he may not want to be around. But the offense is in the lower third of the conference in scoring and rushing. Uh, they've got O-line trouble. The defense is in the lower 25% of points allowed and rushing and passing yards. So really, it's a nothing special team all the way around. A lot of transfers out of the University of Nevada, a lot to Colorado State, lost their coach, new coach in. So there's new athletic director. They've got all kinds of changes, which they are getting a little bit more accustomed to. Motivation for Boise State has to be there to win a Mountain West title. They can't afford to stub their toe, although they can, but they shouldn't. I don't think they look at it that way. The season for Nevada has been a disappointment. Here comes a, a great opponent that I could easily see them get intimidated or just overpowered by if Boise State comes to play. They've had no wins in the Mountain West Conference. Boise State's undefeated. Like I said, Nevada's lost seven in a row. Um, so Nevada's got to hope for turnovers, and that's one thing they've done or had come to them quite, quite well. So if they get pumped up, it's all about hating Boise, and they get a bunch of turnovers, and Boise State's not as motivated, or they're having a rough night for whatever particular reason, okay, then I can see Nevada in this football game, but Boise State's going to have to give them a lot of help. I think along the lines of how Nevada helped San Jose state beat them with two pass interference penalties, allowing nine sacks, making bad decisions on kickoff returns, making bad decisions or mad, bad plays on punt and cover. So a lot of things have to go wrong for Boise state. And it's entirely possible. I just don't think any of us, expected i'm on the road again this weekend sort of a fantasy weekend usc colorado saturday uh friday night and then sunday to see the new sofi stadium with the rams and cards so i don't quite know when i'll get to this post game analysis of uh nevada but hopefully there won't be too much to analyze and we'll be able to watch the game at least on saturday night because southern cal plays friday and the rams on sunday so enjoy it and i'll talk to you later